And as the board is uh, is very well aware, I, I do have an issue with the uh, two hundred thousand uh, dollar legal defense fund for an undocumented uh, residents, and, and really th three major grounds for that. Um, it, it it's outside of our normal procedure for for giving to nonprofits that typically is handed handled through the community funding pool. Uh, we've got legal needs of, of many groups that are unmet, and this hasn't been prioritized by, by that pool. Um, and it's, uh, I think it's out of sync with the budget as a whole. Um, we don't provide legal representation to, to, to many deserving people, including veterans that are facing eviction hearings in civil, in civil cases. Therefore, Madam Chairman, I move to amend the FY 2019 third quarter review by removing the 200000 for the pilot program for legal representation services for immigrants and increase the FY 2019 third quarter balance to 1.764400. So moved. And we have a uh, motion to amend uh, the, uh, the motion is that, that has been seconded by Supervisor John Cook. Discussion on the amendment. Uh, Supervisor Linda Smith. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, for various reasons, I think that I will support this motion. I remember the last speaker that we had at the public hearings, the woman who got up and talked about this very item and said, you know, all good intentions for it, compassion is a good thing. But she, of course, had other experiences with legal immigrants and that was her concern. But I think my concern is not only we have the right reasons, but we also do have another process. And we don't know really that much about the terms that we are going to be getting into with whatever group that we give the money to. I haven't seen the terms and the public hasn't seen the terms. And I think we need a lot more information, and I know that the public does. I've had people ask questions, you know, is this for Fairfax County residents? One would assume so, but I don't know exactly how a Fairfax County resident would be defined. Is it someone who was picked up here or someone who's been living here for years, working and paying taxes? We don't know at this point. I'm also concerned that maybe there's an organization out there that would actually do a better job with this. Arlington gives their money to the Legal Aid Justice Center, and they use that for a number of things. But because we're not going through some kind of a process, we don't have that basis of comparison to see where is the best place to invest the money on this. So. Without that kind of information for myself and for the public, I think we're premature and that it should go through the regular process. Thank you. Okay, and of course, this sets some funding aside um, and following on to, uh, to this action, should there be funding available, uh, there would be a process that would come before this board uh, for our consideration. That's not... I, it, it identified two organizations that were going to receive the funds. Right. So we right. haven't spoken about the right. process by which uh, individuals would be chosen. I'm going to right. let folks be recognized, and then I'm going to turn to uh, the budget chairman if you would like to address some of the issues that... Sure. Uh, uh, Madam Chairman, first of all, um, I'm happy to have the conditions under which the money is released come back to the board uh, for our approval. Um, but I, I would say that, you know, we give money one time uh, to organizations every year in the budget. I mean, we have additional money here for the Fairfax Symphony Orchestra. I mean, those are uh, part of our budget process every year. Uh, frankly, um, I can think of few things more important than, than this at this point in time. Um, our immigrant community is under siege at a national level. These are people who live in Fairfax County, many who have every legal right to be here. Um, and this is to help them make a determination, give them a fair chance in court to decide whether or not they have a right to be here. This organization has presented pretty stunning statistics about people's success rate in being able to remain in the United States when they have legal representation. Uh, and frankly, um, families are being divided almost daily 
uh, in Fairfax County, and it's affecting our county. It's affecting our kids in our schools. These kids many times are born in the United States and are here trying to do the best that they can and are under siege. And so while it would be nice sometimes to always, well, it would always be nice to have the luxury of timing everything the way we want it, sometimes we have to have the moral capacity to stand up and fight for what's right at a time when we know what's happening out there. Let us not act like we don't know what's happening with our immigrant population in Fairfax County. We all just said the Pledge of Allegiance, and in it we said, with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Uh, to me, due process in our civil immigration court system should be afforded to everyone regardless of their background or history, in accordance with the U.S. Constitution and basic notions of fairness and equity, something that we stand for in Fairfax County. This is $200,000. We can parse words all we want about this is only for Fairfax County residents. I mean, they, they've told us that they're likely to be able to help 22 people facing deportation. We know that there are thousands out there. So I don't think it's going to be particularly hard for us to condition this on helping people that are only living in Fairfax County. I don't think it's going to be uh, difficult for us to condition how this money gets used in many ways because in terms of the total need that's out there in terms of legal support, uh, this is a small uh, down payment that could help families not be divided at a time where they're under siege and keep people who are principal breadwinners in a lot of cases, give them the legal right to stay here and provide support for their families. When they get deported and their kids and other families remain in Fairfax County, guess what impact that has on Fairfax County? When you deport the principal revenue earner, wage earner from a family and you deport them and their family remains here. This has serious budget implications. It has serious moral implications for the type of county that we want to be. Um, and frankly, uh, they have every opportunity to go through the community funding pool in the future and we'll have statistics back from them that proves the worthiness of their program so that the consolidated community funding pool can debate that worthiness against all the other needs that they will see through our regular process. So I wish we had the luxury of waiting for the next round of consolidated community funding pool a year from now. Um, but there will be literally thousands of people likely deported almost only because they didn't have legal representation if we decide we want to wait another year. I frankly can't do that um, and I can't let perfect get in the way of good in this case. Uh, and I have no objection to having before money is released having an item come back to the board for approval of conditions under which that money would be released uh, seems to me to be a reasonable expectation and something that we should expect that I have no objection to. Uh, but we need to do this and we need to do it now. Supervisor Cook, the seconder of the motion, and then Supervisor Hudgens. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, first, I, I support the third quarter package. I think it's a very good package. I do support this amendment. Um, I don't disagree with really anything that Supervisor McKay just said, as an attorney, um, I know um, how impossible it is to navigate any legal process. Um, if you're not a lawyer, especially if you're from a different country, if you don't speak the language, uh, and I do think that um, everybody in federal um, immigration proceedings ought to have legal representation. I don't take issue with that at all. Um, I could list dozens of places where the federal government has failed to do things that I think we all think should be done. We routinely list dozens of things where the state government has routinely failed to do things that we all think should be done. And we routinely acknowledge that we as county government can't make up for every failure of the other branches of or other levels of government and we can't, you know, we can't necessarily try to make up for every other failure. Um, and and this, it is a small amount of money, and of course that means it's not going to even make a, a small dent, maybe a scratch in the issue. Um, but if we head down a path of every time we disagree with what other some other level of government is doing, 
we divert our attention from making sure that our government, our county, is doing everything that we need to do and doing it the best that we possibly can. Um, and again, I don't dispute the importance of the issue, but it's not the only important issue out there either. And the, 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 you know, the failure of federal government just in the immigration arena runs back 20 years. It's not new. Uh, I don't like what's happening now either. Um, but we need to stay in our lane and, and that's why I think that this, uh, that the item is misguided and I suppose removing it, I, I support removing it from the package. Supervisor Hudgens and then <clears throat> Supervisor Gross and then Supervisor Faust. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I think there are some very significant and important things in this budget and I think some have been uh, alluded to particularly of this particular issue that um, was raised in the motion. Um, I think it is difficult sometimes to determine exactly what we should do and when and how we should do it. And that does not mean that we shouldn't consider that, that, that pathway. And I think that's what this does. And I'm just going to compare it. We have an exceptional package talking about affordable housing. And we have lagged in affordable housing. But we are making a step forward. And that step is important if we're going to have the balance of affordable housing in this community to support who we as Fairfax are. I think it's saying the same thing here because I think we can say, um, everyone has said that we agree that it's a concern in terms of helping folks who are going through the legalization process and what it can do to families that affect us in the community. And so I think we can find um, concern with all parts of the budget. We know that the process that we have used um, with CC Fact is that we often have brought things here into the budget after going through some more thorough opportunity, the opportunity for them to go through the CFAC or, or to come back into the, the budget. And I think that's where we are right here. And I think we're doing it not only from the financial piece, but for the moral piece that it, it needs to be done. And I support the entire budget. Thank you. Okay. Supervisor Gross and then Supervisor Faust. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Supervisor McKay was extraordinarily elegant um, and uh, eloquent in his elegant, uh, elegant and eloquent <laughs> in his in his comments. And I really I, I just almost wanted to say ditto. But I liked the phrase he used of moral capacity. Um, and and I, I'm going to focus on the capacity piece of it. I was talking to a constituent who had a real concern about this and thought that I should not be supporting it. And she said, you know, um, they could use Just Neighbors. Just Neighbors is a nonprofit who, um, they, just, they, can, they can do this. And I'm thinking, you know, just Neighbors is a perfect example of a nonprofit that needs to build capacity to be able to serve the very people we're talking about. And um, I, I'm not presupposing that, that, that any uh, funding would go to a particular nonprofit, but we need to be able to build the capacity. And so when people are supporting Just Neighbors or other nonprofits, uh, for this kind of work, then actually this, this small amount of $200,000 would also go to building that capacity. Um, I think it's very important for us to focus on what this, um, what this proposal is. It is for civil court, not criminal. It is for family reunification. The Washington Post this morning, on the front page, had a whole lot of information about family reunification and how uh, much, how, how families are being wrenched apart. Um, and we need to focus on the families in Fairfax County. These are toddlers and teens who were born here. Their parents may have some sort of problem with their legal documentation. They may have legal documentation, but it's either lost or not available and so they need some additional help to find it. We don't know what each individual uh, person who might be served, um, what, what their particular um, problem might be, but this is a way of approaching the family reunification piece 
building capacity for nonprofits, and I think it's worth doing a pilot program to see how it works and get, but also have the parameters on how the funding is used, and then also having some tracking as to at the end of the term when, uh, you know, what, what kinds of services have been rendered. I think it's very important that we have them both at the beginning and at the end, and I'm pleased to support this $200,000 for legal representation. Thank you, Supervisor Gross. Supervisor Faust. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I also support the, uh, the $200,000. Uh, I almost wish I had known what Supervisor McKay was going to say. Last night when I was trying to prepare remarks, I would have saved myself some time because I, <laughs> I certainly, uh, his, his words were, I think, uh, wonderful and uh, it capture the total essence of why we're doing this. So I will uh, uh, restrict myself, or re restrain myself to just coming on basically some facts. Uh, you know, the, the deportation process that we're concerned about is a lot of people are getting caught up in it who actually are entitled to be here, they're as entitled to be here as we are, you and I are, but they are indigents and they don't have uh, access to counsel. And therefore, the, this small investment will help some of them. Our neighbors stay in the country that they deserve to be in. It's not a question of, uh, you know, preventing deportation of people who uh, cannot justify a, a legal basis for being here. It is providing a means for those who deserve to be here to make their case. If someone gets deported from this country who deserves to be here, that, that's something that should offend every American. I don't see how a small investment like this could cause such concern across uh, certain circles. Uh, I will say, you know, the, story, the, the reasons for opposing this have changed over time. Uh, we're essentially initially that uh, in order to stir up the opposition that we've seen in the community is that this money could be used to increase teacher pay or this money could be used uh, for, uh, to add police officers. We're talking about $200,000 one time. Uh, and the response to that is, no, it can't. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending upon your perspective, this board has a very conservative set of financial principles that we adhere to at all times. We do not make exceptions because if we did, our bonding agencies would frown on it and perhaps we would lose the AAA rating that we deserve, have earned and deserved. So this one-time money cannot be used for recurring purposes like teacher pay. And I would say, you know, to the extent there is concern of that this money is being spent for, uh, to assist people who deserve to be here in this country but are, would be deported without the assistance, well, there is $1.5 million dollars left over it in this uh, package. If the people who oppose, you know, the 200,000 for the immigrants because it's depriving others of the opportunity to get funding, why didn't they come forward with proposals to us that would have utilized some portion of that 1.5 million? That is not a credible argument that is being made. I'm sorry. It is outside the normal process. Why? Because Things are happening in this country that weren't happening the last time we looked at the CCFP, the Consolidated Community Funding Pool. People are getting swept up into the deportation process, many of whom don't deserve to be there. And so we have a one-time expenditure of $200,000. Whoever gets that money, and I don't agree that it's been determined yet who does. I agree with Supervisor McKay. It's extremely appropriate that we ask staff to come back with recommendations. Uh, but the money will be there for the program. Uh, whoever gets that money is going to have a very short window 
to prove themselves, and then they're going to be competing against all the other nonprofits that get funded in Fairfax County. And those nonprofits, the adding this nonprofit to that uh, base will not change or cost taxpayers anything. The way it works is this board sets aside a specific sum of money to support nonprofits. Those nonprofits then compete for that money. It doesn't, if nonprofit A gets it or nonprofit B gets it, it's the same cost to the taxpayer. So that's what's going to happen after the uh, CCFP reopens the process for uh, applying. Uh, so I would just say that, uh, you know, it, this is, I think that this is totally consistent with what this government does, Fairfax County government does. And in fact, the people who are now opposing this expenditure because it's so, somehow different vote, have voted for the CCFP process, which if you look at the nonprofits there, you will see probably two dozen that get funding for legal assistance to indigents and or funding to help immigrants. That's the kind of society we are. That's the kind of community we are. And, you know, but for the need to uh, politicize a, an issue like this, that's the type of people we are. So I support this wholeheartedly. Supervisor Herity yeah. and then Supervisor Stork. Just real quick, the, the, the two organizations that were referenced in connection with this, and I'm surprised today to learn that we haven't identified who they're going to because they were named, but those two organizations did submit to the CCFP <clears throat> and they didn't make the cut. So they did go through our process. Now granted things, the environment may have changed in the country, I'll, I'll give you that, the point. but they did submit and they did make the cut. So that's something, I, I, I am glad to hear this is gonna come back to us with conditions. Uh, that's not gonna change my vote on this. Um, you know, and there are a lot of groups that are deserving. This really needs to go through our process. But I, when it comes back with conditions, and, and you know, I followed what happened in Montgomery County, and, and this isn't about, uh, this isn't an anti-immigrant vote. This is a, a process vote. The, the people in Montgomery County that were most opposed to this <laughs> were those that were, the immigrants that were here legally and they were most opposed to their tax, taxpayer money going to this. I, I think we need to be very careful. One of the th conditions that I hope when it comes back to us, um, it will include a condition that, that, that the funds not be used to help convicted criminals stay in the country. And I hope we put that, Montgomery County put that on theirs, and I hope we put that on our, uh, on our and, and I said convicted through due process with legal assistance, because you get that for criminal cases, but I hope we can, uh, we can put that language when it comes back to us uh, as we move it forward. Supervisor Stork. Supervisor Stork. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I have, um, I've heard much of the discussion today and, and I've had a, a great deal of opportunity to talk to constituents as well as hear from constituents about this issue. And, and I would recognize that there's some mixed opinions about it, but what I think is clear, and I think Supervisor McKay uh, done an eloquent job of, of identifying the core issues, at least that I share, and, and I think are a key part of why we need to be uh, supporting this and moving it forward, which is that this is an unprecedented challenge. Uh, really, the number of children and families that are impacted right now, I don't think anybody denies that they're, it's just overwhelming. In fact, what we see our response so far is that we are being overwhelmed, and that's not a good thing for those children and family in particular. But that's what also makes this unique and different from the consolidated community funding pool process. It also makes this truly, in my mind, an emergency, something that um, we need to respond to ahead of uh, what will ultimately be uh, decisions that are made a year from now. And for that reason, I very much support this. I think there are clearly many other needs. I, I fully recognize other legal opportunity needs that, that are in our community. But I think at this point, we have to address this issue at this time and look to do better for the other issues as we move forward. But I fully support this decision and, and this uh, vote. Thank you. All right, with that, um, I am supportive of the, uh, of the third quarter package uh, that does include uh, the $200,000.
uh, that would provide legal representation uh, to people to be able to make their case for why they believe they should be able to stay in this country uh, legally, who have for, I think, you know, been, been in this country uh, with their families, paying taxes, and, uh, you know, and policies have changed over the, over the decades and over administrations, and sometimes you have individuals who are caught uh, in the crossfire, so to speak, uh, with those changes in policy, changes in administration, and I think this funding will assist people who wish to make their case before the courts as to, uh, you know, as to why they should be able to remain in this country legally. We do provide funding uh, for others uh, that includes funding for legal, uh, legal assistance and legal representation. Uh, so it's, this is not the only, you know, the only thing that we've ever done uh, in that area. So with that, um, I'm going to uh, not support the amendment, but support uh, the package uh, without the amendment. Um, time to vote. And if, if we could uh, vote around the dais, if everyone could state their, this is a, on, the, on amendment, the amendment. On the amendment. Uh, and so this is a vote on the amendment. Uh, we'll start with Supervisor Stork. Nay. Cook, aye. Hudgens, nay. McKay, nay. Gross, nay. Boss, nay. Smith, nay. Other Smith, aye. Parity, aye. And the chair votes nay, and the amendment fails. And now the main motion is on the third quarter. 